This is the Starlink Mini, and it happens to be one of my favorite pieces of tech of 2024 up until this point. And the reason for that, well, it's kind of in the name. This thing is super tiny and ultra portable. It easily slides into a backpack. It has a fully self-contained unit, including a router inside here, and this really great flip-up kickstand. And that simply means that you can deploy it in a matter of minutes and you'll have broadband internet. But one of the things you need to consider is how are you going to power this, especially if you're, you know, like me out there traveling or me out there on the trails and you want to have this for safety? Well, you need to bring along a battery pack. Now, not all battery packs are created equal. And I've been fortunate enough to test about 20 different solutions. Everything from a standalone lithium battery to a solar generator to something really small and TSA approved like this. And today we're going to walk through how to use a battery bank with the Starlink Mini, but I'm also going to fill you in on my top three favorite battery packs for the three different situations I find myself in often and that I reach for the Starlink Mini. And the first thing you're going to need in order to make any battery pack work with the Starlink is a barrel to USB-C. Now pay attention to the size of this, it's super important. I will have all these things linked down below, but this cord is probably one of the most important pieces if you're trying to get this system to run. Obviously, this will go into the USB-C of your chosen power bank, and this simply connects into the Starlink via the barrel adapter. Make sure that this is at least 100 watts. You wanna make sure you have a, at least a 100 watt. Now that's a bit of an overkill, but I think it's better to be on the safe side by getting a cord that can handle way more wattage than maybe you're pushing. Make sure you get this cord. This is imperative to making it work off the grid. So this is the first one that we'll talk about and probably one I use most often. And the reason for that is because it's lightweight, it's kind of portable, easily to slip along. I mean, you can see the size difference there. It uh, doesn't weigh too much. It only comes in at 1.4 pounds, and it's also 2700 mAh, which is the cutoff for TSA. So if you're intending to use this and fly anywhere, you need to make sure you're getting a battery pack that does two things. is at least pushing 65 watts, which this one does, and also is uh, only 2700 mAh. Now this has a 65 watt power delivery from the USB-C and you can actually charge this one by putting 65 watts into it. So this is actually pretty unique and awesome because it charged at that high of rate, which is really nice. So it quickly charges, it has fast charge on it. And this battery, you can expect, you know, constant usage to about three hours, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on how intensive of the draw that you're pulling on the Starlink. And coming in next is just a bit of a step up. And this is a step up in terms of MAH. This is 50,000 MAH. Now, I don't really know the brand of this one. It will be linked down below. There's quite a few different brands of this style. Very similar to the other one. It has a USB-C that's required, pushes out 65 watts. But where it's a bit different is this thing only charges at 45 watts. So it's going to charge a little bit slower than that 2700 milliamp. And it also, almost being double that MAH, it's going to get you about six hours of constant internet use. This thing weighs, the other one weighed what, 1.4 pounds? This thing weighs 1.7 pounds. So it's not that much. It didn't double the weight um, and, and it's, it's 50,000. So this is one that I grab, you know, just because it's not that heavy. And if I'm going on an extended backpacking trip back into the backcountry of Yellowstone or something, I tend to grab this one. Though that's really kind of a toss up between the two, because if I do have a solar panel that I'm plugging into the USBs to charge, well, of course, this one's going to charge a lot faster. So if I'm real ambitious, I typically bring both of these, uh, but just know that this is going to give you a lot longer. And I think pound for pound, I mean, the, the fact that you're getting pretty much double the capacity, but you're not doubling the weight, uh, this is a really good option that's kind of middle of the road that I think you could do a lot with. You just can't fly with it. Next one is this Anchor Solex. This is actually pretty cool. It's more like a solar charger. It weighs eight pounds and it's 90,000 mAh. So it does weigh a lot more, but it has a lot more inputs as you can see. I'll do a full review on this because that's how much I like it. it. Actually has three, four different USBs. 
You can actually use two of these to charge. So let's say you have two solar panels, you can plug this in and this thing will charge up to 140 watts. It also has this little, I think it's X60 if I'm correct, charging port. And basically that's for solar power that hooks directly into my solar panels. And those solar panels, this thing charges really, really quickly. I went from zero to uh, 100 in a little over two and a half hours, which is pretty incredible. I was only hooked up to a 100 watt solar panel there. But because this one has a solar charger built in as well, this thing's just gonna be a bit more efficient charging. But again, it weighs a lot. So the chances of me putting this on my back and taking it into the back country, well, that's just probably not going to happen. But for car camping, this thing is really awesome. It also has the benefit of most solar chargers or at least most modern solar chargers. And that is that you can actually plug this in, have it powering your Starlink, and then plug in the solar port, and it's actually going to charge while it's also pushing out energy. So let's say we have 100 watts. Let's say this thing is averaging about 40 watts, 50 watts of power. Well, then it will have anywhere between 50 to 60 watts if we're inputting 100 to charge this battery, with, which basically is a net positive. But when I'm using this, have the solar panel up out in the field, it's actually charging it and it barely dips below 99%. So as compared to the other ones, of course, this thing weighs a lot more, it has 90,000 mAh, but also charges a lot faster and it's going to provide a bit more power. I don't need to take anything much bigger than this because this will get me 12 hours typically of constant use of the Starlink Mini. And for something this size, I mean, you can somewhat see here the size, it's smaller than the Starlink Mini. So this is certainly a great option if you're looking to power the Starlink and you're not too concerned with weight. So this is one of my 100 watt solar panels. Super nice, just folds up rather easily into this small little carrying case. This thing's pretty rad, 100 watts. I don't know what it weighs. It's not, it's probably weighs more like five pounds to seven pounds. So it is something that I typically take car camping or in my RV. I have a 60 watt panel that I review later that I'm intending to maybe bring along with me if I go into the back country. We've got a big trip next year into a really remote part of Montana. So I'm trying to figure out the solution myself, but I use this quite a bit and it will hook up via USB-C. So on the back of it, there's a couple of different ports, one of which is for USB-C and you can certainly power that way. There's also other solutions. And if you recall on the Anchor, they actually had an X60 port and this cord will be linked down below as well. But the Anchor actually comes with one and it has a barrel port. Now these things also have a barrel port that's actually going to be able to push out a bit more power. So using the X60, I believe it's called, is going to be one of the better ways to power it. So yes, you can use USB-C, and this is actually gonna give you pretty good power, but if you want the most out of it, you might wanna look at something like this in a barrel port. So when you're looking at solar panels, you just wanna pay attention to what connections they have, or if you can buy a connector like this to make it work. These are great solutions in terms of recharging your little power banks. And in fact, I have these set up in my yard quite often because there's just something nice about using the sun power in order to charge up anything. So that is basically all you need to know to get it going. Really simple, really easy. This is a Tishy Heru, H-E-R-Y. Again, I don't know where they get these names, but I've had this now for about two years. I've used it for a lot of my other bigger solar chargers, and this thing is certainly rock solid. Especially if you're like me and you're off the grid a lot, or you're in the back country, you can bring this along. Not only can you have communication back to your loved ones, but it's a matter of safety. But we're connected back with the internet and with the satellite, so if you find yourself getting into trouble, as I mentioned, hopefully you can get yourself out of trouble. Anyways, I'm Hill Phantom. I hope you found value in this. Please like and subscribe if you did, and I'll see you next time.